Um, so before, so I'm just going to kind of um, kind of walk you through it. So the first page in your handout is kind of a location map of the area that we're talking about tonight. So it's along Saddle Road on the slopes of Mauna Kea and also touches a little bit on the Mauna Loa side. Um, we're talking about three parcels. So if you flip that map over, there's um, three parcels highlighted in yellow. Those are the parcels that we're talking about tonight. And if Kahana could flip the, the slide. So, so th that, that first handout kind of gives you an idea of where we're talking about. So just a real, oh, back. So just a real quick um, review. This is what we're kind of going to cover tonight. In your packet, you also have um, a, a, a packet of our slideshow presentation. So if you have a hard time seeing it up here, you can kind of read it um, in front of you. So real quickly, our agenda. Um, so the purpose of this meeting is um, to get beneficiary input on potentially, for the department to potentially renew our license agreement with the Department of Land and Natural Resources. In 1992, the Hawaiian Home Commission approved a 20-year license agreement uh, with Department of Land and Natural Resources for the three parcels highlighted in yellow. Since 1992, the agreement has lapsed. So DLNR has approached DHHL and is asking to renew the license. But before we make a decision, we wanted to gather the mana'o of our beneficiary. So that's the purpose of our meeting. Um, we'll be providing a little bit more information um, so that you folks can have, give us a uh, more informed opinion or if you still have more questions, um, feel free to ask. So we're going to give um, a real quick uh, overview of how the department kind of is guided by our planning system and how we make decisions on land and land management. Um, DLNR will give a presentation of what they have been doing on these three parcels over the last 20 years. And then lastly, we will review what um, DLNR has um, approached us with in terms of license terms and agreements. But before we respond back to the DLNR, whether or not we want to go through with these terms, or if we want to change the terms, or whether or not we don't want to go through it at all, we want to get your manao. So the second section, the second part of the meeting will be to get that manao from you after we um, give you a little bit more information and context about what we're talking to me. Okay, next slide. So if you have come to our meetings before, you've probably seen this diagram before. It, it shows our um, department planning system. At the top, we have a general plan, which kind of gives us statewide policies on how we manage the resources of the trust. Um, as we go down the tiers, we have more specific island plans. The island plans help um, guide the department and the commission on where to put residential development, where to put agriculture, where to put commercial, or where um, conservation is might be the most appropriate. As we get more more lower on the on the chart, um, we have more specific plans for more specific areas. So the area that um, we're talking about tonight, there was a plan done for for it called the Aina Mauna Legacy Program Plan. And Mike Robinson um, will talk about that in more detail. Um, so I'll give the mic over to Mike. Give the mic over to Mike. I like it. Uh, I'll have a couple. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, I want to really briefly talk a little bit about I'm on a Legacy Program. I know some of you have heard this presentation before, so I'll make it as brief as I can. Um, this is 27% uh, of the trust lands on the east side of Mauna Kea, uh, 56,000 contiguous acres, part of the trust. Um, the Iron Mountain Legacy Program was adopted by the Commission in 2009. Roughly, it's a 100-year plan to restore these lands uh, to their former productivity as best we can. Those of you who know the history of the area, it was under uh, lease to Parker Ranch from 1902 to 2002, 100 years. And in that, uh, during that time, uh, the land obviously changed a lot. Uh, a lot of the Mamani forest disappeared, the coal forest, the Ohia, uh, which replaced by grass because it was being used for grazing, which was an appropriate use back in those days, and perhaps even still. But the Anamana Legacy Program tried to restore some sense of balance to that landscape, and so as a result, there's a lot, of more, a lot more uses uh, expected of this area than, than, than just range, okay? 
Um, and then to follow up with the plan, we need to do an environmental assessment on the area, which allows us to implement the program. And that was adopted in 2011. So next uh, slide. So this is language directly from the plan. And basically it says provide for the management and protection of native lands to support cultural resource management, again, the balance of cultural as well as protecting the, the far, or protecting the landscape out there, the resources, and create homesteading opportunities. Although this traditionally was not used uh, by Native Hawaiians to live, um, this, uh, uh, we still believe that at some point we may want to have homesteading out there, because we know we have a shortage of lands and people that need to get on the land. And so as a result, uh, for example, the balance we talk about, here's Saddle Road, a thousand acres uh, planned initially for homesteading. That would be the initial homestead settlement out there. So uh, folks that would homestead would have access to Hilo, Kona very easily via the new Saddle Road. Uh, then another thousand acres adjacent to that. And again, these areas were selected based on the land. Adequate rain, adequate sun, access, something that would make living in that area as easy as possible, even though it is uh, uh, a rather cold, remote area, okay? Next slide, please. So, the plan talks about that balance. It includes homesteading. It includes uh, 2,000 acres, roughly, of pasture. And this map is in your handout, so you can look at the acres uh, in the upper left-hand corner there. And they associate with the numbers there, like P2 or H1. And you can understand the parcel and what its designated use would be if the plan was fully uh, implemented. Uh, so it includes homesteading, pasture, forestry. This used to be, uh, like I said, Mamani and Koa forest. A lot of the watershed has disappeared because of the removal of the forest. Um, but uh, we, we hope to restore trees into that area and increase the watershed value of that area for people living up there. Uh, the fog that moves through is no longer captured, but could be captured with the trees if we put them back. And then conservation. Uh, we have allows that are interested in having native forests that they can go to and collect native plants that in some places exist nowhere else except these very high elevation lands. So we have conservation areas like the Kanakwe New Bird Quarter, way up at the top, and then the Wailuku uh, Bird Quarter in the middle. Again, that protects the, the river, the watershed, the stream course, and allows the native birds to migrate Makai to Lomo, which they no longer can do because it's just grassland in between the upper forest and the lower forest. So, and then, and then commercial, how do, we, how do we pay for this? Do we keep asking the legislature to give us more money and they say, maybe? Or do we have a commercial area where we can generate money for ourselves and use our own monies to pay for some of these things that don't generate money? And so location, location, uh, Mauna Kea Access Road, Junction with Saddle Road, lots of people go through there. Maybe they want to stop, maybe they want to visit. This is an opportunity for jobs, perhaps, with the homesteaders in that area. Instead of driving to Hilo to go to work, you drive to the junction there. And so there's about, um, what is it, uh, 500 some acres right in, uh, right in this area right here, okay? And so that, that would be part of the equation. Ecotourism, hire a native uh, Hawaiian guy to take you back in and, and see how we're restoring the land, you know, at X dollars a, a day and, and create local opportunity for people living up there. So, uh, next slide. So where exactly, how does tonight's presentation match up with the Anandama Legacy Plan? Uh, we already pointed out the star is this general area, and then the map on the right is the DNR parcels that are being considered, uh, our DHHL parcels being considered for renewing the license tonight. Next slide. So here's the Anandama Legacy map. There's the map of uh, the three parcels. Next slide. And the arrows point to exactly where they are on the map. So you can see how this license would fit into the plan if we choose to uh, renew it. Of course, we haven't made that decision, which is why we're here tonight to listen to your Manalo. But um, basically, the largest parcel is over here, Kipuka Ainaho. Uh, these are Mamani restoration areas, uh, and, and, and they all are above the new fence that was, is, has been built around the uh, mountain to replace the old fence. Uh, so uh, basically, those are our lands but um, uh, they're adjacent to the Mauna Kea Forest Reserve. And so I'll turn it back over to um, 
Andrew. Thank you. So just real quickly, um, I, as I mentioned before, in 1992, the Hawaiian Homes Commission approved it to issue a license to the Department of Land and Natural Resources for a 20-year period for wildlife management, forest reserve, and public hunting purposes. In October of 2012, the license agreement expired, and um, in December 13, DNR requested uh, DHHL to renew the license agreement, and this is why we're here tonight, is to collect your manaho on whether or not the department should or what terms and conditions you'd like to see in the license agreement um, if, if we do approve this license agreement. Um, next slide. So um, this next part, um, Dave Penn from the Department of Land and Natural Resources will give more information about what um, the Dep Department of Land and Natural Resources has been doing all over the last 20 years on these three parcels. Thank you, Andrew. Aloha, everyone. I'm, I'm David Penn. I work with the Division of Forestry and Wildlife in the Wildlife Access and Acquisition Program. And the main objective of our program is to enhance opportunities for public hunting, outdoor recreation, trail access, forestry conservation, all of our purposes. I'd like to uh, thank all of you for being here tonight and Andrew and the rest of the DHHL folks for working with us very closely on moving this proposal forward and to see where it goes. Uh, in case you are wondering about the Division of Forestry and Wildlife, I thought it might be useful to read our mission statement while you're looking at this map here. And uh, you might notice that it's similar in many respects to the statement that Mike Robinson read from the environmental assessment for the Ainamauna Legacy Plan. So the Division of Forestry and Wildlife, Malamaika Aina, the mission is to responsibly manage and protect watersheds, native ecosystems, and cultural resources, and provide outdoor recreation opportunities while facilitating partnerships community involvement, and education. I don't have it memorized yet, so I've got to keep this in my back pocket. Um, on the map here is just to uh, indicate some of the features of the area. For instance, the diagonal lines are forest reserve areas, both the Mauna Kea Forest Reserve on the top and the Mount Aloha Forest Reserve on the bottom left and the Waiakea Forest Reserve on the bottom right. Uh, in between is a portion of what we call Kipuka Ainaho, that large parcel uh, that is proposed to be part of the license agreement. The part up in the middle that's blanked is the University of Mauna Kea Science Reserve. Also, our roads and public trails are on the map, particularly the Pu'u O'o Trail, a historic trail that goes through part of the Kipuka Ainaho area and the Mauna Kea Hunters Road which uh, does not actually does actually go through the parcel on the upper right there. And then also the two parcels on the top, the smaller ones, the dotted uh, shading shows the Palila Critical Habitat Area as designated by the federal government under Endangered Species Act and uh, currently subject to, uh, DLNR is currently subject to the federal court order for that area. Okay, next slide please, come on. Uh, this is a map from our hunting rules. The division, and along with the Division of Conservation and Resource Enforcement, uh, manages the hunting programs statewide. You can pick up copies of these rules on our website or also at the district office in Hilo, down there at the base yard. And this shows in the middle, uh, on the, sort of on the bottom, the portion of the Mauna Kea Forest Reserve and Game Management Area, which is hunting unit A. And so the two parcels on the top of the previous map, those are in hunting unit A and have been subject to the regulations for that hunting unit. We can always change the hunting regulations through a rulemaking process. 
but that takes a while. We have to get the approval of the Board of Land and Natural Resources, hold public hearings, and have those administrative rules signed by the governor, and then it can take effect. So it's not set in stone, but this is the framework that we currently operate under and that we would continue to operate under if the license agreement is renewed. Next slide, please. And then the Kipuka Ainaho area across the saddle road is in hunting unit E. And so that's a different set of rules and regulations as opposed to the Mauna Kea in hunting unit A. Okay, next one. And we do keep tabs on what's going on up there based on the information that the hunters provide at the check-in stations. We certainly don't get information from every hunter that goes in there, but we'd like to encourage folks who do go in there to sign in and sign out so that we can use the information to help support the hunting programs. In 2014, in the Kipuka Ainoho area, we counted 675 hunter trips, and the take from those hunter days was 93 mammals, that would be sheep, pig, goats, and 11 birds of various kinds. Uh, we also, in the Kipuga Ainoha area, operate the Wildlife Sanctuary for Nene. Uh, this is one of the areas that's right under the main flyway of the Nene on the Saddle Road area, which is the picture on the lower left there. And our efforts include some pens that are enclosed to protect the nesting birds from predators and watering units, uh, and I have a map of some of that detail coming up later on. Okay. So, um, you may have questions about some of these hunting regulations and some of the other uh, stuff that we're presenting. Uh, if you'd like to hold your questions for the discussion period, that might work out better so that we can get, get to the discussion period faster. Um, this is just basic information about the hunting program. Hopefully many of you are there are hunters and do have a hunting license. Uh, a lot of the support that we get from the federal and state government, the level of support depends on how many licensed hunters we can register and how many stamps we can sell for the different hunting programs. So in order to legally access the public hunting area it requires a public hunting license. You get the hunter license by completing the hunter education course, which is offered locally, or by having a letter of exemption, which means generally that you have a license from another jurisdiction, another state, or another country, and that the state of Hawaii will recognize that if you provide us with the information. Uh, there are special provisions for disabled hunters, such as vehicle provisions, crossbow provisions, and if you're hunting with a firearm, uh, aside from our regulations, there's also the firearms regulations which are managed by the Hawaii County Police Department under state law. Next, please. And uh, when I checked on the website last week, these were the hunter ed classes that were still open for registration. Uh, I understand that there are classes coming up in Hilo next month this month in February, so you can get on the waiting list for those classes even though they're not listed here. And that's with the Division of Conservation and Resource Enforcement, or you can sign up on the website, I believe. Okay, next please. So once you have the license, uh, the next thing is where, where are we gonna go hunting and what are the rules for that particular hunt? Uh, every area, for instance, tonight we're talking about Area E and Area E has its own set of regulations with regard to the open season, the hunting days during the season. Uh, generally, a hunting day is from half hour before sunrise to a half hour after sunset. Uh, in some cases, we may issue a public notice to close a portion of a hunting area. It may be for public safety reasons or for resource protection regions for our management activities that we have to take care of and we prefer not to have hunters in the area while we're doing that. Uh, or we may limit the number of hunters uh, in order to provide a, a better hunting experience and to manage the game uh, as we deem necessary. And that's generally through our lottery system. 
Uh, the other thing is about getting to the hunting area. Some hunting areas, there is no legal public access route. If you can get the permission of a private property owner to go through and get into the public hunting area, that's fine. And so a big part of my job is to help identify places where we can work with a private landowner and establish a public access route so that it's easier for people to get into the public hunting area where it may otherwise be impossible or unless you want to go ahead and take a chance at trespassing. Uh, we also have safety zones that are generally 50 yards from any paved roadway or building. Uh, you're not allowed to discharge a firearm within those areas. And then there are all kinds of other special conditions and restrictions about equipment, dogs, vehicles, bag limits, and so on, uh, which are available in our rules. And if you'd like to study that in more detail, you can pick it up at our office and you can always contact us to ask questions about it. Okay, next please, Don. So once again, these are the three parcels that are proposed for the license agreement. It's a total of over 15,000 acres. Uh, with the largest being the Kipuka Ainoho area at the bottom and the two upper parcels totaling maybe about a quarter of the total area and as Mike mentioned this is the Mamani restoration area uh, and those efforts are mainly to support the recovery of the endangered Palila bird. So the purpose of the license as we see it would be for us to continue to operate the public hunting program and to manage other wildlife that exists in the area, native plants, native animals, endangered species, cultural resources, all as indicated in our mission statement. Um, I'd like to emphasize that what we're proposing is a non-exclusive license so that if the Department of Hawaiian Homes decides there are other things that they would like to do on the property, it can be done. You know, we're not leasing the property where we have full control and we can exclude people. No, it's just our purpose is narrowly limited to wildlife management and public hunting. And that the things that we bring with us when we do that kind of management includes our fire prevention and fire control programs, our weed control program, animal management, both game and non-game animals, and uh, helping to manage the people who are accessing the area and particularly through our Division of Conservation and Resources Enforcement which provides the response for any sort of uh, activity that is generally frowned upon by the law. Okay, also uh, we're going to be required under the proposed license to submit an activity plan, basically our management plan to be updated on an annual basis and a report on our activities for the previous year. And of course, uh, Hawaiian Homes will have the option to terminate the license and we can also terminate the license under I think like a 30 day notice period. And Hawaiian Homes may require us to return the land to the pre-license condition, uh, which in this case would not be much of a problem because there is very little infrastructure there that we place on the property, basically the nene pens and the watering units, and that's about it. Next, please. Uh, so once again, uh, this is the map for the public hunting area, Unit E. The map for game bird, game bird and game mammal is basically identical. And I'd just like to quickly give you a snapshot of what the specific hunting regulations would be for these areas. So the next slide. Uh, starting with Kipuka Ainaho Unit E, there are game bird seasons and game mammal seasons. For the game bird with dogs and shotgun, it's November to January, Saturday, Sunday, and holiday. And for the spring turkey hunt, it's March, coming up March 01 to 31. It's a daily hunt. However, it's archery only. No firearms for the turkey hunt. For the game mammal hunt, it's October through March, Saturday, Sunday, and holidays. Again, archery only. And for uh, the game mammals, pig, goat, sheep. 
Uh, for Mauna Kea Unit A, it's a little bit more complicated. Again, this is the map of the area. Next one, please, Colin. And so the game bird season is also November through January. More days are available, Saturday, Sunday, Wednesday, Thursday, and holiday. And the spring turkey hunt is a little bit longer, March 1st to April 15th instead of through March 31st. Uh, on the game mammal hunt, it's every day. And there is not a bag limit for sheep, goat, and pig. Uh, pig hunting is not allowed on game bird days and firearms are not allowed below the tree line during the spring turkey hunt. And there are also some specific regulations about uh, checking out from the areas by 7.30 p.m. on the hunting days. Uh, this is the final slide that we have. It's a little bit of a close-up that shows the Kipuka Ainaho portion of the proposed license area. And as you can see, there's really not much there in the terms of infrastructure. There's the historic Pukuo Trail that comes in on the Waiakea side. And up there at the top by mile 26, that little line is the, uh, is it a Jeep trail or just a footpath? Old Jeep trail that we use to access the area. Uh, the two uh, lime green rectangles are the watering units for the Nene program and the semi-circle line there, that's the fence uh, around the Nene uh, nesting area that's there to protect the birds from predators. Uh, particularly, there's been some problems in there before with wild dog packs, so, uh, and that's something that we maintain on a very regular basis. So that's what we have for now, and we look forward to discussing more of it with you when we get to the other side of this. Thank you. Mahalo, Dave. Um, just real quickly to emphasize what Dave had mentioned earlier. So these are what we call the terms and agreements that um, of a license. These are um, this is what the ONR has proposed to buy the homelands. And before we respond to them, we just want to review it with our beneficiaries. So the licensee or the the tenant or the renter is the Department of Land and Natural Resources. Um, it, it will not be a non-transferable license, which means they cannot go and sublease it to someone else, like Target or something like that. They have to keep it within their position, I mean possession, and manage it. Um, and as they said, it's a non-exclusive license, which means that um, if other people are interested in going up there and accessing it to do something, they can. Um, the term of the license, which means It'll expire, like the original license was 20 years. They're proposing 10 years, and in 10 years, the department can revisit the license agreement and choose to or not to extend it an additional 10 years. The land area is the three parcels in the map that we um, get handed out. Um, it's approximately 15,000 acres in total. Rent. The Department of Land and Natural Resources has offered to pay us uh, fair market value rent. Um, that is to be negotiated. Um, and technically, and, and by that we mean we're, we'll try to get as much as we can, as much as they are willing to pay. Um, permitted use. Um, the ENR is only allowed to do those, those activities, wildlife management and public hunting purposes. They cannot do anything else. They cannot develop these parcels for other types of purposes. Next slide. So some special conditions in the license agreement that they propose to us. Um, the department retains the right to collect um, <coughs> any economic revenue that's generated on the property um, back. Um, any economic activity um, that's generated on the property except for um, the fees collected for public hunting. Um, within a year, if this agreement moves forward, within a year of the agreement getting executed, they must provide an inventory of the structures and improvements on the premises. And also within a year of um, execution of the license, they would have to provide an annual report to describe what types of activities and accomplishments they've um, 
achieved within that time year. So they'll be reporting back to the Hawaiian Homes Commission and to the beneficiaries about what they've been doing. And they'll also give us a plan of what they intend to do in the following year. So um, with that, that kind of that concludes our um, informational presentation. I know we went through a lot. So if you have any questions, please let us know. Um, also, before we, I open it up to, I just want to point out, we also handed out green sheets. Um, these are for you to write down any comments or questions. So if you're like me and you hate standing in front of a large group of people and talking, uh, you can feel free to write down your comments or questions. And then before you leave, please put it in the box behind that gentleman in the sports coat right there by the camera. So um, yeah, that's another option to express comments. So, and one more thing, um, when you do want to um, give a comment or ask a question, please do like that gentleman and raise your hand so I know that you want to talk, okay? Thank you. I'll start with you. I uh, like to thank you folks for coming today. Uh, but I, I believe that uh, you have got to be good stewards for us. Okay? That goes whatever you folks have planned for for us, our country, our land. I think that maybe uh, this me alone. It's just a side of me. No, I am mine. You have got to be good stewards because for the past what twenty something years you have not done anything for us. Mama Kea, we have not done anything for our lands in Pana Heavy, we have not done anything for our lands in Kau. Yeah. And you see here, and tell us, for a license, I say this, the Cattlemen's Association, the King of the Hawaiian Islands, say to you, our cattle up there, get yours off, so we can put ours on. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so. I got a question for Hawaiian Homes. Uh, you heard tonight how many times he said beneficiary. Yeah, so my understanding, and I could be wrong, that this meeting is for beneficiaries only. Yeah. No, no, I, 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 I just think, but I can get some that night. So my question is, does the non-beneficiary have a voice in this meeting? So that's a good question. Um, some, so the way we, we invited people who are Hawaiian Homelands beneficiary, and, um, which means you're either an existing lessee or you're on that wait list to become a lessee. Um, when we have our meetings, we, 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 we like to be welcoming. So if people who are not beneficiaries um, come to our meeting, we welcome them. Um, we, in the sign-in sheet, we try to distinguish between beneficiaries and non-beneficiaries, but obviously when people talk in the audience, it, we, we, we don't know, but the commission has guided us to take the opinions of the beneficiaries above and beyond non-beneficiaries. So, does that answer your question? Yeah. Um, okay, got a question there and a question there. So I'll go with the one in the back first. Um, uh, if, up to you if you like, come to the mic, or if cannot, then try talk as loud as you can, and I'll repeat the question so everybody can listen. So far, I feel that I just wasted my time. Yeah. Just because I'm serving, I'm not a hunter. Yeah. I mean, Jesus Christ, as the beneficiary, I came to see what you will give to me for the clients in homes. about what the department is going to give the beneficiaries. So I'll go to, someone else had a... Oh, oh okay. Uh, my name is uh, Harry Kalua. How many of you know who I am? Raise your hand. Okay, for those of you who don't know who I am, but no one don't want to raise your hand, it's okay. <laughs> but I grew up in this community. How many of you knew, like 
robbing this community and where I was born. Raise your hand. Okay. How many of you over here, beneficiary, in December 16, 2014, this land here celebrated 90 years? Raise your hand if your family was here. So that's 90 years ago. Raise, no, raise them high. We need to know. I need to know. Because you know what? The rest of them are lost. So I fought generation on home state. And I'm proud of it. We still have a place across Bay on the 1126 Kalanya Anomaly Avenue. So we need to know history. And our biggest failure. How many of you will listen to your great grandparents, grandparents, parents, and you as my fourth generation? Raise your hand. Raise them high. I need to know. And that's why we have this problem. The rest of them are not known. So it becomes our obligation to let them know. It's about history. And December 16, 2015, we celebrated 90 years, 91 years. Now we get nine more years for my country. I like thank everybody over here who had 100 years. If you were spotting the news or not, did you say tonight, who had our land for 100 years? Who, who, who had our land for 100 years? They will mention them tonight. Who? Pacarans. You see how simple? 100 years. The first question they get for DLNR and Hawaiian homes. I want an audit. I want an audit. All the time, I like C. Because the next question they get, if you guys see any history of their property with Papa Ranch, get all the information from Papa Ranch. I'm pretty sure. How many of you will hunt on that place? Raise your hand. How many of you will hunt to a whole ranch? Raise your hand. Okay, I'm coming to that. I'm coming to that, brother. I'm coming to that. Okay, now I'm coming. The enforcement part. That's the part. Enforcement. Yeah, okay. But that land, the 56,000 acres, is Hawaiian homes land. Okay, so that tells me. You don't have to do an audit. That tells me. Paka Ranch, we do the same thing they did for 20 years and get the information. They allow to get the information. Now they're telling us. I think all of us can address all what they see tonight. But if they will talk to Paka Ranch, tonight I think I would hear how many of you beneficiary on the list for pastoral or on the list for agriculture. Then if you're on the list, then you go. You go to the list from number one to how many department? Of the waiting list. 27,000, 56,000 acres up there. We all can get what? Time zone, just time zone. That's how much we can get. See, simple stuff. No need consulting, no need nothing. It's all about history. So now, if you don't pay attention, December 16, 2024, we will celebrate 100 years. So tonight, I get an opportunity. Because not too much of you get that history, so I would. So all of those of you, if you agree, I will put the Department of the LNR, the Department of Hawaiian Homes, on notice. Okay? And the notice is, we get nine more years, when we come back and get a meeting, for that least, we better take off. Because if I ask them right now, Pastor, who can tell me, if you're in this meeting, have one lease that has been given. Pastoral. <coughs> How many of you get pastoral lease here? Raise your hand. That's correct. Now ask the department. The other now I know I know. It was in my mail last night, correct? So how many of the leases was there? See? 60 and we get zero. And guess what? <coughs> All the 56,000 is in our jurisdiction. That's why we don't get anything. But go look, if you will sign up, go look what number you are on the list. Because evidently, then if you look at us, 
I guarantee you, people in India, all those of you, don't only raise your hand, but just laugh out loud. It's over 70. It's over 70. And on that list, I really disappointed because that's those who want to do it. Let me give you a little bit history about the last guys they gave and people will fight. Asian Hawaiians will fight. It's important that I say this. You know what? One of you will give a big argument over here. I will save the argument and everybody will change tonight. We had addressed the aging Hawaiian senior list that was suing Supreme Court and all over the world. But I'm proud to say I was on a commission when we settled that. So, how many of you we get that was agent of mine, if you're here tonight, raise your hand. Raise your hand, and you will get the list. You was part of that group. And it was 67 Hawaiians from 1952 list. And department, you will find that if I write or wrong. Okay, go help me out. Because I was the one, there was the request. These two people told me, eight years I served and not getting paid. Jimmy Akiola and Irene Tong. And out of the two, 67 we gave. They all at Holokai, right department, or are wrong? If not, go find out. Okay, there's only one Lone Ranger. He's not with that group. Who can tell me where he's at? Department, tell me who. Where that one senior, the Asian Hawaiian is located. Can you guys answer me that question? Thank you. What do you say? Stand up. Okay. And, and, and your last name is, is Sharon. Okay. Okay. You see how good it is? You see how important it is? Purposely, he's up there. So that tells me. Right next to him, number one on the list can go there. Mike, if I heard you correct, you see, thousand, 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 right? Okay, 300 acres per beneficiary. So as how many beneficiary can go right next to Mr. Kanil? I think there was residential housing. Okay, residential in a pastoral place? Or A. Or A. Residential or A in a pastoral place? No, no, in the Anamana plan. Oh, Anamana plan, okay. So, hey, come on, Mike. Come on. No, no. I got to talk to Mike. You know why? Mike, I always tell you, pay attention because I'm going to monitor you. Okay. okay. This is why I tell Mike. Mike, no, Mike. The history of that place. Who will grumble to get that piece of property? Was the agent of mine on the lease, and it was 1950. And they, what year did they settle that? I was out of the commission already. 2000 and wait. It has to be after five. Because I got out in 2005. Six or seven. Six or seven. So I was happy. So I was waiting for go to the list, fight number one, number two, number three, and put them on the net. It's real simple. Because let us as beneficiary go restore our culture of the 56,000 years. <laughs> Let me tell you why. I fourth generation. The three generations in front of me, they all at the cemetery. Yeah. And I gave a big obligation. Maybe you don't know. And we gotta be humble. We cannot yell at each other. Be positive and give input, then we can move on. It's all written there. The beneficiary will take the lead because of the Hawaiian Homes Commission. If they follow that, we get no problem. So we gotta educate all those who work as partners because the difference between them and us, I get paid, they don't get paid. That's the difference, but it's the opposite. Okay. But it's very important, to me it's very important, because I know we're here sitting down, one way or the other, we're all family. 
So let's do it together. Let's think positive and let's help the department help us. That's why the whole mountain, the 56,000 acre, for me, you like the lease? No. Anybody else get leased all over that mountain? It's no. Because you know what? We can renew, and I like that. They can get the license, provided they make the beneficiary take the lead, and then you full partner with us and help us. Right. And, and last question again. How many of you get the OHA wild OHA paper, the news that they sent to you? How many of you get that? Raise your hand. Okay. How many of you in Reno before you came to this meeting? Because it was issued out the latest one. Those of you in Reno, what they say in that issue, brother, Sela, and hey, hey, you get the paper with you? Okay. Come, come, brother. I get the paper. Come. Come. <laughs> Come, brother. Okay, who like who like read for me? Please come read them. I get them right here because I get all the documents. Read them. You go read them. Read them out loud. This part right here. Read them more glasses. Okay, I go read them. This is what he says. Only one department in the state of Hawaii government has constitutional mandate that guarantees sufficient funding by the state of Hawaii for operation and programs, the Department of Hawaiian Land. And then, I'm not going to read the rest. It says, State Constitution, Kuliana. It says, Historical Failure to Funding. And again, Court Order 28 million sufficient. So that was the Nelson's case. So, that's why I say, if they do their job, it's so simple. We don't need to do all that. But, but it's very important because communication is the biggest failure. Come to my give us one meeting all about this. And then they go vote maybe next month or two months ago. All that got to stop already. You can do if you include us in this whole program. Because we will be the caretakers of the land, those who are on the waiting list who are there and go there. Because we get all the expertise. That mountain is a gold mine. Restoration of coal. There's a lot of things up there. But that's where I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it at that. And it's, to me, it's important that I have to stand up tonight. I don't want to hurt anybody. If I apologize if I hurt you or anybody. But go home, think about it, and come back and help us to be on the land. Because I tired here people. I've underlined 20 or 40 years. Three fourths of them, you blame yourself. Because you never participate in me. You never come out for good things. But I remember. I remember a lot. So I feel like I gotta come tonight and tell them. Because there is a lot of contract on that mountain. Cut them all off. Cut them all off. Yeah. Unless beneficiary is participating. What did they pay? Yeah. What yeah. did they pay? Oh. Exactly. Oh. Exactly. Oh. Oh. oh, anybody from the department can answer? I see others are here. Open me, uh, open stuff somewhere. You can answer. If you cannot, go for it. Oh. Uh -huh. You can answer. I, I'm not putting anybody on the spot, but I need to know. And then I'll tell you why I'm asking. Thank you for the question, Uncle. Um, Per our annual report, I don't know if you guys got the latest annual report. Um, well, no. not even the last annual report. It would be 2012's annual report. But the lease rent was $8,845, I think, I believe, um, a, a year. Yeah. $8,845 a year. $15,347. Wow. Okay, thank you. So the, the question over here was, is that um, the lease or is that what you guys collected? So the answer Kahana said is, it's what we collected. Per year. Per year. Okay. 
That's what they collected per year. Now the only go tell me what they did. <coughs> and at the end of the whole thing is Alexia, I'm mean the beneficiary, can go on the lane and go, look, they tell me, I can give the money too. You see what I mean? People can give the money and things like that. But give us that opportunity. Because for me, this is the best change. Because as another 20 years, and then this, this place will be 100 and, uh, 110 or 20 years. You cannot anymore. So I like stop with it. My generation, so all of you who are fourth generation, you better not think positive because we're going to get nothing. So we got to turn our attitude and everything to positive. Help the dear and our for help us go hunting. Because I'm not going to tell you, but my uncle was a poor ranch and we were hunting there. That's why I had to stand up. When I see meetings, I attend. But I make a positive. Negative, you cannot go nowhere. You're going to stay like that forever and ever and ever. But when you get contracts, please be honest. Don't broke the trust. Because we were, the one dollar trust is no longer supposed to be dollar. Because you know what? They were locking the lease for 65 year lease. Dollar. So we're all good. This next time we're moving forward, please don't do that. If you put people on the land and charge dollar, I get no problem. That's our lease. So if I give you hundred dollar, my lease is good for hundred years. I go because I'm beneficiary. So that, you know, that, that, so I have to stand up and say that. I apologize to everybody if I say something I wasn't supposed to say. I wanted to say that. Because right now, if we all pay attention, yeah, if we all pay attention, all of being here, no more money, no more money, no more money. Okay, I can talk to you now. How is your folks enforcement? I'm pretty sure they shot on enforcement. You know why? That's why they illegal hunting. That's why they get all things. They don't sign. They go in there, they don't sign. They will get caught when they get hurt. And that's a fine. So he said, just be honest. You go and hunt, go hunt. And sign in. They tell you what to do, so follow the law. Whether we like it or not, follow the law. But no more on the 56,000 acres which you talk about hunt. And then the big passion ran outside by the highway. And, and the case of big there, they go. You see what I mean? They will put you in the place again. But we're okay because 56,000 acres. And they give the hybrid license. I like my license say, I can hunt all the 56 because I know I'm going to catch them. I don't need to go way inside. I can take my regular car, go right there, and I'm going to catch them. You see what I mean? But, but let's not do that. Let's make them correct. But I would stop everything, all the leases we get. And you know, let the department and uh, the our association help. Yes, bro. No, no, I understand, brother. Lots of people yeah. need to be heard. I hear what you're saying. That's right. But people need to be heard. They want to be heard, don't you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Let everybody talk. Okay. Thank you. No, I okay, man. I okay with that. But I okay. You guys like talk? That's fine, but I did my part. Because I asked those raise hands. All those are raise hands. Mine, I think they should follow me. If they like talk, I think there's no problem with that. But that's why I apologize. I'm sorry for all that. But. Thank you. Mahalo. So just, just so I can kind of summarize it for our note taker. Um, some of the main points that he brought up was that. The, the, the acres on Ainama, or the 50,000 acres, it could be used to address the wait list. Um, also, if DNR wants to be up there, um, they need the beneficiaries need to are the need to be the lead. And if DNR wants to partner with the beneficiaries, that's okay. But the beneficiaries need to be the lead. Um, we we the leaders up there. And then if they if. Um, Dofa or Dena wants to partner with them, then that's what it is. I saw a hand over here, Commissioner Ichibashi, you wanted to say something? Or? Hello, I'm Mike Kako. Sorry, I don't ask. I get three questions I gotta ask. I'm the original Backstreet Boys. I live from Evelico. So I get, I get Kuliano over here, okay? I, I was the first family to move to Paniyama. But I was born in Evelico. So that's my 
I'm going to talk, but I've got to sit down because I've got to ask questions. I get three questions that I like asked on, on, on behalf of the benefit on the commission. Uh, number one is how can the renewal of this lease promote the rehabilitation of our people? Anybody can answer that? How can the renewal of this lease rehabilitate our people? Number two is how can the renewal of this lease meet the risk? fiduciary responsibility of the commission to benefit our beneficiaries and the trust. And how does this renewal meet any one of the purposes under the Act? that when the department makes the decisions, those are the main questions that we as staff should be able to answer. So I think that, so the manamo that Commissioner Ishibashi shared is that when we uh, make these types of um, decisions, it's not just for this one, but for anyone, we need to consider those questions. Yeah. And then you, okay. And then you, you had the, the follow-up? You guys will benefit the act. Under the purpose, the purpose is section 101 of the purpose of the Hawaiian Homes Commission Act. The Congress of the United States and the state of Hawaii declare that the policy of this act is to enable Native Hawaiians to return to their land in order to in order to, to return to their land in order to fully support self-sufficiency for Native Hawaiians and the self-determination of the Native Hawaiians in the administration of this act and the preservation of the values, traditions, and cultures of Native Hawaiians. The principal purpose of this act include, but are not limited to, establishing a permanent land base for the benefit and use of Native Hawaiians upon which they may live, farm, ranch, and otherwise engage in commercial or industrial or any other activities as authorized in this act. Number two, placing Native Hawaiians on the land shall set aside under this act in a prompt, not happening, and efficient, not happening, manner and, ass and assuring long-term tenancy, long-term tenancy to beneficiaries of this act and their successors. Number three, Preventing alienation of the fee title to the land set aside under this act so that these lands are always be held in trust for continued use by Native Hawaiians in perpetuity. Number four, providing adequate amounts of water and supporting infrastructures so that homestead land will always be usable and accessible. And number five, providing financial support and technical assistance to Native Hawaiian beneficiaries of this act, so that by pursuing strategies to enhance economic self-sufficiency and promote community-based development, tr the traditions, culture, and quality of life of Native Hawaiians shall be forever self-sustaining. Okay. Section 206, other officers not control not to control Hawaiian homes lands except the powers of and duties of the governor and the board of land and natural resources. In respect to lands of the state shall not extend to lands having the status of Hawaiian homelands except specifically provided in this act. So that means that nobody can control our land except us. So you guys decide how we can move forward. All leases cancel on Mauna Kea. Mahalo, Commissioner, for, for that Mauna So I think to kind of summarize what you're say, saying is we should not be doing anything that is inconsistent with the Act. Um, 
that we, everything, our dispositions need to be consistent with the purpose of the act moving forward. So, I thank you for that manao and for that direction to staff. Thank you. Um, who I, you I, I can go, you I, wait, you I can go first? Or, okay. okay, so I get him, him, and then back there, and then back there, okay? You know, I, I'm going to stand on what uh, the commissioner right on the act. The act is for the native Hawaiians, not for the palito birds, and not for other animals. We're not animals, but this act was written for the native Hawaiians. We are the beneficiaries of the land, and we have to stick to the act, because the act is a law that was given to us, native Hawaiians. We survive on this act, but you, you know, the, the word tells us that let God's word be true and every man alive. Everything that comes out of a man's tongue not gonna come out true. There's there's a there's something behind that. But I only put my trust in God. But what 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 our king wrote is of your and that act. Nor can you change these things. But you're trying to transition it to your style. These native Hawaiians have been waiting for a long time. And I come against whatever land you have here, go back to the beneficiaries of the land. Second, we have people that are here, they've been waiting on the list for many years. It's time that you return the land back to the native Hawaiian. We build our trust on righteousness, not on lies. Manipulation is between the tongue and the heart. It's not what comes out, it's what comes out of a man's mouth that defiles the person. And that's what's happening for many years from the time I was born and raised in Kyoka. There was this song called Hawaii 78, and, the, the, and it says that our land is in great, great danger. I just told my cousin, I made a little documentary back in 1992, that Mauna Kea was going to be a place of a city. You're not telling the people that there's going to be a city up there. How many of you guys know that there's going to be a city up there? Without letting our people know that there's going to be a city, why do they put a park up there? You know why? Because that's the children's park up there. Why is it up there? You guys got to ask the question. Why is the county park up there? Why are they eradicating animals? Because when you eradicate animals, they're going to build a city there. Just like Waikoloa, eradicating the animals. And right after that, a city has been built. Open our eyes, open up our hearts, but if we build our trust on God, there's no way you guys can move us. Hallelujah. We build ourselves on that. It has to be righteousness. That's what we build our life on, on righteousness. So stick to the plan what, what Hawaiian homes say. Don't try to manipulate the lies. You know, I came here because my wife said to come and listen. Back in 1978, Hawaii started to march for righteousness. And now you guys have been taking that away from our hearts. Now it's time to fight back the right way. Amen. But I agree on that. But I come against the land that you guys are about to redo on the lease. I'm pretty sure that you guys are in upkeeping on your 20 years of payment. I'm pretty sure you guys wanted, wasn't up to par. But there's me, the, our Hawaiians have been crying out. Crying out and crying out. It's like a pebble being dropped in a flat lake and the pebble is going down and there's voices that trembles from the top. Which one of you guys are gonna go and pick up that Hawaiian? Think about that. Pebbles being, being dropped into the water and you can hear the echoes of the native Hawaiians of long ago from our kupuna to our young generation. How much land are you gonna end up taking away? And that breaks my heart. But I'll tell you something. When you break righteousness, that our queen said that in his prayer. You're not hurting us. You're hurting him. Thank you. So to summarize, um, the land should be returned to the beneficiaries um, first and foremost. I'm sure most of you can speak better than I. I think DNR should be out.
completely. And I also believe that there is watersheds that you're protecting or trying to manipulate the watershed areas. That's why I have selected those three parcels. We gotta stop all of this craziness and give the land to us. Stop them all. We have to, the only thing we're gonna do is by coming together. In meetings like this, force them, force their hand. They gave a thousand acre lease to Freddie McGregor, I believe, which is all. They grow a Christmas trees on the mountain for money. They've already agreed, if it hasn't been done already, to cut down 70% of the four trees on the top of Mount Akea to pay for various projects. That's a lot of money. It takes thousands of years for those trees to get that big. No rain, no nutrients. Stop that. They're taking our money. The animals, they're taking our animals too because we, we cannot self-sustain. No animals, no self-sustain, no water, no living there. Keep our water rights. Keep it out of the Illinois. Thank you. All of that. So to summarize, um, do not renew the lease with the LNR. Um, keep our water in um, beneficiary's hands. So, oh, okay. Um, you want me to bring the mic back there, or you want? I sit on the uh, board for Hui Kako and Ho'opulo Pulo. And to know that we have looked at this waiting list of 27,000 of our people who are waiting, and so many who have passed waiting, and to sit here and see where this is going, I tell you this, and I thank, I don't know where you are, Whoever honored God, because God is with us. I tell you, this is what happened. I sat in a TMT meeting, and I heard the attorney from the University of Hilo, not, not Hilo, Manoa, speak to Clarence Chin, Ku, and also to Paul Nevis's son. Looking straight at them, he said this, we told you folks a long time ago, prove to us that you were here before 1778. That's why those small observatories are up there. That's exactly what he said. And you know I'm standing because the room was full of TMT people. Our own people had to sit on the floor, on the edges, okay? I'm standing at the door 
And I'm saying to the Lord, how could our people prove that, Lord? There was no written language. <sighs> Pohakuloa had found Evie, and I had sat on the bur burial council. So I knew the Nagpra, Nagpra laws. Mind you, I don't know anything, but I know who knows everything. And I honor the gift that he's given me. So, what happens is, this happened in March, I believe, of 2012. They had this meeting. They explained about this EV. They showed the charts. And there were other Hawaiians that were at that meeting. There was no lineal descendant there, which opened the door for us who are cultural Ohana. And because my father's father family is from Kohala originally, and my mother's side is from Hokkena, I knew that I had the cultural right to speak to the mountain, which I did. I'd forgotten all about it because it took a long time. You had to give your genealogy. They had to run it through a genealogist of their choice. In October of last year, October 15th, I believe, there's this big envelope Department of the Army, and I'm thinking, what is this? It was a golden egg, and I tell you that, and that is for us. Because when I read it, it was on the letterhead of the Department of the Army, it was signed by the Lieutenant Colonel of Pohakuro, and it identified the remains that were found, found exactly where it was found, and it dated back 3,000 years ago. Now, talk about a gift from the Lord. So, what happened, and this is the other blessing, is that, and I want, he's here, Mike Yellen. Mind you, he's not a lawyer, but he walks with more than what I've seen lawyers do. We are presently in the courtroom with exactly what they have failed to do for us. And I want you folks to know this, but we just stay in prayer, stay calm, trust in the Lord, because it's over. They have abused and used our people for enough. Enough. So please understand the, the, the seriousness, too, that came out of the paper yesterday, because they changed the terminology of things Crown lands, now ceded lands. Why? Because it gave them the right to do what they wanted to do with crown lands. Just in the paper yesterday, and this is the uh, hero, the hero, it speaks about zoning now, and they want to take this, going to the legislature, and this is where we have to start standing up to this. They're going into a new term rather than subleasing because it's totally illegal and that's part of this law case that we are now going into the court with and the way why they're jumping the gun to that changing the words through the legislative body is to take it out of the courts these are the th i don't know anything but i tell you that man back there with the white shirt on has helped me in the short span of time to understand little words and what it does in a court. So I just, you know, I'm, I'm sitting in the back there wanting to be very still, but I tell you, the gut in here and the man upstairs said, you get up and you tell them. And so for those of you who would come to show us this, I have sat and watched. Every time we have a change of governor, we have a total change of everything that they have previously presented us with these grand plans that work, work for Republican. They paid so much money for these plans. And then boom, somebody else is brought in as a governor and boom, out goes that plan. This is where we have, the, they tell us not to spend our money, huh? Foolishly. But look at what they're doing with the money that it's supposed to be for the beneficiaries. And it's about time, if that plan was good enough for a Republican and a Democrat comes in, we want to keep on that plan. Don't bring us some new fancy things. And when leases come up, and this is what's happening here, they're going to take back land when we got 27,000 people who are waiting to get on that land. 
And this is where enough is enough. And we don't have to fight and yell and be ugly about it. We are the beneficiaries. Stand up for who you are. Know that these lands were left because Kiakua knows that we are of our queen and all of our other elite. But I tell you, what moves me is the prayer of our queen. Yes. She watched her flag come down and she sat next to the thief. And she prayed, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Come and save my people. This is the time. Walk in her. Know it. And not in anger. But forgive them, for they know not what they do. And for those of you who sit to take care of the beneficiaries, take care of them. Don't use us anymore. It's enough. So to summarize, um, we should be vigilant about uh, pending legislation in, in the legislature and the courts. Watch the little language changes. Um, the the land should be used. I mean, returned to the beneficiaries. Um, and I think the last part is don't the department shouldn't be using the beneficiaries anymore. We should be serving them. Amen. Okay, and we have a couple others. Hello, my Kako. Hello, everybody. Hello for coming out tonight, beneficiaries. Hello, my name is Yokepo Kaululo Peo. I'm a beneficiary too from the island of Oahu, but now I live up here in a beautiful big island. But um, we heard all you guys' concerns, and we went to the last night meeting out in Waimea, yeah? We went to the other meeting, and we discussed, and we heard all the situations that came out. We've been spending a lot of time on Mauna Kea, yeah? This past uh, half year, a little bit over, to reconnect and seeing all this neglect that took place up there. We was waiting for the uh, community to respond, the beneficiaries in fact, yeah. So we went last night to see how everybody reacted to the beneficiaries of all these kind of concerns that's coming out. So now that we got the, we, we kind of have a sense of what everybody feels, we'd like to share that Waimea is already, um, is already moving forward with trying to um, unite the beneficiaries to go ahead and malama this, this aina and up the mauna aina, yeah. So with that being said, we, we, me, and my brother Lakia, um, we've been out, we got to sit on the board uh, and discuss these things with, uh, with the DHHL and so forth and the commissioners. And we came up with a proposal, yeah, a nonprofit based on our communities, our Lahui, the beneficiaries, to go ahead and make this management happen, yeah? Yo. So last night, Waimea already accepted that we were going to work together and start communicating and uniting within our mokus, yeah? Opio and Kupunas, and we're gonna end up deciding how we to steward this land, yeah? This is a big kuleana, and we're gonna have to separate this equally and share these duties, yeah? Because this is a responsibility that everybody has to take part in. This is a big, big task. They've been trying to do the best they could, but they couldn't. We see it now, yeah? So now we have to be proactive about these kind of situations, yeah? So now we have these things that we have to go into a little bit more depth. Um, Brother Lockout, we can come up and we can talk about a little bit of um, what this grassroots, um, basically the OPO, us, the beneficiaries would like to present this vessel that we can all connect and go back and do what we're supposed to do, live, ranch, farm, all of the above on our terms and steward first and foremost, yeah? Because we see the neglect, we see what takes place, so now it's time to be proactive about these things, yeah? So, if you guys have all luck for just speak a little bit about this program. Hey, mahalo. Um, aloha mai, ola kia koui noa. Um, I'm not a beneficiary. Uh, I don't think I qualify. Um, but I was raised here in Keokaha. Um, I went to, um, not Kaumeke Kaeo, but uh, Kikula Kaeopuni. Um, you know, playing baseball and football right out here, you know. Um, but, you know, we spent a lot, like brother was saying, we spent a lot of time on the Mauna this past year. Um, not nearly as much time as a lot of our community members have. Not, not nearly as many generations as our people have. But we did see a lot of neglect. We did see a lot of concerns. We didn't see kanakas on the land. Yeah, we saw very few hunting, going here and there. 
there's no place, that's why, for the Kanakas to come up, congregate, be ourselves, hunt, gather, fit, you know, all of these things, pule, yeah, connect to this Aina. Aina isn't just one place up in the mountain or a place that you can ranch, yeah. Aina is the connection between the Kanaka and the environment, yeah. So, you know, we started getting the ball rolling um, last year on a proposal to unite the beneficiary communities. Yeah, we got six mokus on this island. So our, our idea is to have six seats on a board of beneficiaries. Yeah, and these beneficiaries are the ones who can control what happens to the Aina Mauna area. What happens to the sheep station? What happens to the reforestation efforts? Yeah, because what happens is we take all our concerns to these guys, yeah, and they take them back a little bit higher up, and then they come back next year and do the whole same thing over again, yeah. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to be proactive. We're trying to get participation. We're trying to get kanakas out from your communities, yeah. We're trying to encourage the OPO to be a part of this, yeah, because their future is going to be protecting this mountain, protecting these resources so that we can survive, so that the beneficiaries have security from the environment that they've always lived off of, yeah. A um, couple more specifics, um, we're called the Koa Kia'i program. Um, you know, we, we just grassroots, we try to do what we can, we went through all kinds of different hassles just to get on the table back in December to present to the DHHL commissioners. Um, we never know that it was just to present, it wasn't for anything else, they wasn't going to make any decisions. But what we realized is, we need the beneficiaries on that table, right? And we have to put ourselves there, we have to put ourselves there. So, like we're saying, we're proposing a, a six board, um, non-profit, state, we already got everything lined up, but we're looking for board members, we're looking for beneficiaries, we're looking for the people who want to malama this aina, yeah, and then bring in the projects. The Aina Mauna Legacy uh, project is over 200 pages long, there's all kinds of plans they got, development, yeah, mall, you know, all kinds, potential, potential, right? How, how are we going to control that? How are we going to have our say count? We have to put our feet on the ground first. So what we're proposing is that we take the first step. Yeah, you put us there. We clean up that area. We malama that area. We start planting, restoring, bringing the haumana up to have service projects. Yeah, but it's for the communities to decide as well. And we have to malama and share and divvy out the kuleana across this island because our mountain is that important to us. Yeah, it's going to take all of us to Malama that mountain. It's a big kuleana. So um, if anybody would like to, you know, talk story with us, um, leave us your contact. You know, we don't have any funds or anything like that, but we get choke, you know, choke energy right now. And then we have a lot of young Kanakas who are ready. You know, Malani's here. We have a lot of Kanakas right here in this community. You know, Kama Liloy. Um, but we want, we want the elders to lead this project too. And we want the OPOs to be the one to put their feet on the ground in Malama this place. So if anybody wants to talk story with us afterwards, yeah, um, we'd love to take your information and, and come up with a solution for all of us, you know. Um, mahalo nui to you guys for listening to us. Uh, you know, I hope you can at least share this Malama with whoever might be. Um, take them back home, yeah. And uh, we're going to be doing our own community meetings, uh, hopefully soon, once we get a board together, once we get people who want to steward this mountain. Um, sorry for taking up all you guys' time, but we try to do our best, and uh, we, wanna, we want you guys, actually, to benefit, right? The beneficiaries need to benefit. Pow, you guys already heard, no more leases, yeah? No more evictions, yeah? No more evictions. There should be a halt on all evictions, all new leases, and like the community said, cut the, cut the leases on the mountain. Yeah, put the kanakas up there already. Let's make it aina, yeah? Not just land, not just rock, not just dirt. Aina, our spiritual, you know, regeneration, feeding, yeah? 
and it, it's a reciprocal relationship that we have to mahalo. So mahalo, you guys. Aloha. <laughs> mahalo. Um, so just to summarize, um, I know it's a connection between Kanaka and the environment. And if you're interested in uh, talking story with these um, young gentlemen, they'll be around later on. And if you want to learn more about what they're doing, they'll be available. So um, I think, Ron, did you have a comment or no? Okay. No, okay, we go over here then. Oh, well actually, Ron, Ron raised his hand like, way before, so I just wanted him to have the opportunity. And, and then I'll go to Aloha. Uh, my name is Ronald Kudani. I'm the president for the PNO Hawaiian Homestead Association. Uh, we're located by the hospital, small association. Um, but we ourselves are very concerned with the mountain. And uh, I have been after Joby for two years now that we're the only area that doesn't have a regional plan. And if you notice, I'm sorry. Yes, yes, I'm sorry, Sky. So, um, and by having a regional plan, if you notice on the map, it helps protect uh, the area that we have some input as to what uh, will happen in that area. And uh, I gotta thank Julie, because Julie is the one that sort of encouraged me to have uh, asked them for a regional plan. And Andrew, about four months ago, says yes. So us in Kaumana will be having a regional plan sometime in September. So we would also like our input because that's our kuleana. Yeah, we're in the Ahupua'a and Pionua. And if you don't realize, we're sitting, the inventory of the whole state is 203,000. This is over 20, almost 30%. And I, I, I feel that there should be some stewards, so I, I'm glad a lot of people, like Uncle Pat, uh, uh, wants, we want to be all part of it. Right now, we have seven associations with us, I believe. I'm just trying to find Bill Brown guys, the funny ever guys. Anybody? Oh, no, I'm sorry. But um, uh, that's my concern that the waiting list shows 27,000 people. I don't believe that. It should be triple that because so many Hawaiians have given up applying for Hawaiian homes. And the only way we can do that is, is to convince them that DHGL is on our side to, to get um, people on the land instead of others. You know, the others have more uh, access to land than the beneficiaries, which is sort of sad, yeah, if you think about it. And I, I cannot fault these guys because I am so upset that if you ever went to DHS office, I'm surprised they're even here because they're running with 42% uh, vacancy. 42%. This is a state agency. What agency can run with 42% less people? So, Andrew, I really applaud you. You and uh, Kaleo, Manuel, because, you know, how can you do a job when, when, when you don't have the staff to function? And here the government is jerking around that, oh, uh, this is the legislature's process to fund. This is the AO fund. Administration operation, nothing to do with benefit, it's just to run. These are the civil servants, these are the state people. You, you, know, you know, and this is your money. Most of you don't understand. Like this department contributes about $10 million to these uh, trust funds in Oahu. Every year, the commissioners have to take money out of the trust funds, your funds, uh, so they can operate the department. So just remember, this year, 2016, is election year. And to me, we Hawaiians, of course, Dari, where are you? This, this is my Hawaiian. <laughs> and and, and uh, we have to all get ourselves registered and vote. Even though you vote for a Republican, that's okay. As long as they know the Hawaiians are standing up now and trying to control their destiny. Don't leave it up to others, you know, because no matter what, they answer to the governor. And that's the unfortunate thing. So, and that, that's all I want to say. My basic thing is, 
register to vote. Okay. Thank you very much. Mahalo, Ron. So to summarize, um, applaud Andrew and um, uh, no, register, no, to re register to vote and um, Kamana and Iohonu, the regional plan process at the department will start will start in um, hopefully September of this year so that they will have a more say about what happens in their community. Okay, mahalo for waiting. Aloha. My, like uh, Andrew Dutch said, my name is uh, Mikey Allen, and we, uh, we're the ones that have the uh, suit concerning all of Hawaiian homelands. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to stop everything to bring back all the Hawaiian homelands back to the, the people. And even it, it includes uh, Mauna Kea, it includes all the islands. It also, we also went into the uh, annexation, the overthrow. So it, we're trying to bring back, because if you read the Hawaiian homelands, it's just not 200,000 acres. It says all available lands. Yes. So if you're consisting about, about 1.5 million acres that actually should be Hawaiian homelands. And that's what we're fighting for. <clears throat> to, try to, to try to bring, to, to go from back to the beginning and, and bring it back. Because even, even when we addressed the overthrow in court, we just had a hearing last week in court, and they never even wanted to talk about the overthrow. We brought up the fact that the United States Constitution doesn't authorize the overthrow or the, the annexation. The United States can, cannot annex anybody. So they never wanted to address that. All the main issues in court, they never want to address. They never even want to address the subleasing for the Hawaiian homelands because under our, uh, Section 204 of the Hawaiian Homes Act, it says you can't sublease and, and where they have an interest in the track. So, and so that they've done that. And what, what here, it's like they're, they're going to take this land again and it's just like it's a constant take, take, take where the act itself doesn't authorize that. So it's just, I mean, we're not going to get any action in the state courts. We all know that. So it, it, as, it, as we go up the levels, because our argument is federal arguments anyways. And, but we're trying to get all the Hawaiian homeland back. We're trying to get everything off of the uh, Mauna Kea. All the telescopes are illegally on there. Because we're trying to get all of these. Every, every, everything, we're, it, we're just trying to clean the slate and bring everything back. Because what they've done is they've taken land, Hawaiian homeland, and they've and lease it out to, to industries and stuff like that, but it's supposed to be for the people. And so that, that's, that's our main, main goal. And plus it also, we, we want to, during the hearing, it was brought up the fact that they're the ones that brought the overthrow up at the hearing. So it opened the door for us to address the illegal overthrow. And most, most people don't know, but annexation, the illegal annexation and the illegal overthrow, has never been addressed in court before. People have brought it up, but it has never been addressed. So, and also the Kuwait petition. The Kuwait petition has never been brought up in court. We brought that up too. Because the fact is, if you have an annexation, you gotta have the majority of people to vote for annexation, and you have 30,000 signatures that said no. So even, even any time they take any kind of Hawaiian homeland, the answer should always be no. No matter what, it always should be no, unless you are, Hawaiian, and that's your beneficiary. That's the only time the land should go to anybody. Thank you. Mahalo, and mahalo for summarizing at the end. So anytime, I think what you said at the end was, anytime um, there's a petition for Hawaiian homelands, if it's not a beneficiary, it should be, the answer should be no. Um, other comments? Oh, sorry. Thanks. Kihei. Aloha everybody. Aloha. Um, it's so good to see everybody here this evening so we can um, get a little perspective for me. I, I think kind of for, for the department. Um, what's been presented tonight, you know, for me as a leader, I'm, I'm KPFA, it's Kyokapani of the Farmers Association, I'm the president for that association. And I just want to come up here and share with you just, just a message. I'm a messenger tonight. So Ron Kodani had shared a little bit about what we had to fight.
find out on Oahu last week Sunday before the State of the State address. So we all got together as community associations throughout the state of Hawaii. And we got into a, a, a meeting to learn the process. And I'm gonna tell you something for me, it was a really great eye opener, you know. Every year goes by, there's a legislative session, and I'm like, ah, that again, oh, this is not working, that, you know. <clears throat> I, there's been so many years that I've been just working, it's very busy. I'm a third generation Kilkaha, over here in Kilkaha. Um, my parents are Albert and Eleanor Ahuna, and they were community leaders as well. And they did the best that they could to bring the, the department or the, the program as we have today now. So what we're faced with today is something for me that I, I really don't want my children to have to deal with this later on. It's something that it, I believe it's a tipping point of a change from what we found out in Honolulu. So just kind of bringing it to perspective is what I want to share with you guys is what I see here in front of me is, is a very powerful group of people is what I see. Even in my community association, I can't get this much people to my association meeting. I cannot. And this is the thing that I see with this group here. After learning the process that we went through on Oahu, and I'm going to share with you that all, not some, all of the leaders, of the homestead leaders in the Department of Hawaiian Homelands, they were very awakened and they were very big eyed and knowing what we're facing. And this is what I got to share with this issue tonight is, yeah, we say aole and all that. You know, we should table this. How long has this been, the license been? Yeah. They expired in 2012? Yeah, well, 20 years in 2012. So 2012, the license expired already. They're using it still. Yeah. They just table this thing. Yeah. Not give them the lease, not give them the license. Yeah. You know, but let me continue on. You know, what I'm saying here is because this is a process that's going to continue for us to come to meetings and be diverted from the main picture that's going on with the department. And, and, and it's us. Come, Andrew, come. I've been to meetings before, and I've seen leaders inside our department say, well, we did this, and we did this for you guys. I always felt that we are the guys, the department and the beneficiary. We have nobody else to go to, but to the ones who's going to take care of of all of our administrative process. If we have to go to legislature, we have to do it ourselves, but we need, their, we need them to help us to get everything in order so we move together as one. Um, very disturbing on that day that had the, the state of the state, how everybody just kind of like, we're all together, and then all of a sudden, raw division, because they're working for the state, and we're trying to we're trying to fund them. We're fighting as beneficiaries. Uncle Uncle Dickie Nelson, he fought. He won the case. There's a ruling out that the state of Hawaii is ordered and mandated by the Constitution of the Hawaii in Article 12, Section 1 that the Department of Hawaiian Homeland shall be sufficiently funded by the state of Hawaii. No questions asked. Yeah. But this is the thing that we found out. When we went to legislation, we still have to go tell them, remind them, hey, will you support this bill? Uh, this, bill? this is a, at the top of our list right now, in my eyes, I believe. This one is at the top of our list to make sure that our department has the funds that they need, that it will continue every year and make sure that the, the legislation is held accountable by the mandate that was given by the court order in, in November of last year. So this here is something we'll have to go through 
will have to go through this and others just like this. But my, my thoughts is not to get very worked up over this. We are emotional already because of what it has, what has happened on it, and our beneficiaries who's not on the land. If we don't get this done, all of these things are just going to happen. This is what I see. I truly believe because we can be in here, we can, we can, we can discuss, and we can get angry, we can get emotional. But here's the commitment side of it. Because legislation is going on right now. And we've learned that, that if we don't do anything about going and giving testimony in the proper bills that are being now, the senators and the House of Representatives, they're putting all these bills out, and I'm following this thing, and it's just mesmerizing me, but the ones that I know, I gotta go and put testimony in and try to support our community association for the farmers. All of the associations in the state of Hawaii, this is the thing that they're doing right now. They're trying to push that funding. If they don't get funds, our trust fund will continue to fund them. If they get funded, then we need to watch how they use the money to take care of what needs to be done for us, and then not a trust fund, we can do our brainstorming how we want that done for the beneficiaries of the Department of Hawaiian Homelands. So this is the Hawaiian Homelands. Our prince had really to, to us, but it's still, it, it, it's a program to me. I, I've learned that it's a program. No matter what's happening around us, no matter what happens around us, this is a certain program that will be, that will be operated, it will, it will do all the mechanics it has to by that trust and by the, the Constitution, we hope. We found out that the Constitution was breached for a very long time. We can't go back and do anything to try and... And I don't feel that we should get all worked up over there, although we're emotionally, you know. But I, I am you know, kind of disappointed how things go. But our legislatures are bound, we've learned. They're bound by the oath that they took to uphold the Constitution of the State of Hawaii that if they don't pass this bill, then the, then the funds and the budget for the state of Hawaii is basically unconstitutional, is what we understood. A am I right here? Yeah. Uncle Pat? Oh, yeah. That means that everything stops. That means extra sessions, that means all these other things that we gotta go through to try and get it done. So, the legislatures are the ones, and we, I, you know, I'm going to talk about our governor. He didn't mention nothing about this. It's not even on his, not even on his, under the pile. That's how I feel. We got to go in, we got to make these guys accountable here and in meetings like this. And I'm just sharing this so we can have an understanding. I, I believe that is real. And I've been for the last two weeks, came up from Honolulu. My, my wheels spin so bad that it, it kind of, you know, it's, it's been keeping me up. I need to reach out to my association of members to let them know we need to get on this. We only have to May 2nd to make this happen, but if that bill don't pass through all the readings from the Senate and the House committees and it dies, it won't happen. It's a mandated court order, if they don't pass it, we don't get it. How are we going to get it? I have no idea. To me, it's a, it's a constitution that is law that they basically will break. And how has how as we as people stopped them from breaking the law or hold them accountable for that? That's what's been spinning my wheels all these days. But I think that's the big picture we have here right now. Not this. This is, this is a distraction. 
We should table this. We should not do this. That's what my message would be. No. Because it's taking away our energy from the things that we need to take care of. That's the big picture. And the other thing is, we, we went and introduced, well, we supported other bills too. Like to, like to get independent counsel for the Hawaiian home because they always get into problems. When the beneficiary wants things and they go and they put it into, into uh, Attorney General's office, Attorney General bows to the governor. So we want some division there so we can get what the, what the act will help us fulfill. And if that goes through, then at least we have a little bit more of continuity and we're all on the same side. Because all my years in Hawaiian homes, living this dream here, it's the best deal in the whole world. For me, it's been the best deal in the whole world. How we protect it, we've got to identify how we can help this thing kind of stay porno. Or us, our children, like our brothers out here, they like form a hui with the mocha or the moko keave, which is solid. But we don't want to leave them with this. We like have them for work with a machine that's they working already. Then we can go from there. Who knows? They might work for us in the long run. So that's kind of my one out. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Okay, to summarize, um, this particular issue is important, but it's not the most important issue for beneficiaries right now. What Kike was talking about is um, asking all beneficiaries to ask their legislature to sufficiently fund Hawaii homelands as mandated by the state constitution. Um, he also said to table this measure um, is a distraction, um, and I think that's, that's pretty much what he said here. Okay, so I have one comment here. I just want to um, point out, oh, oh, did you guys want, oh, sorry, I call my, um, you guys can go. We have, um, okay, you guys, and then you after, okay? Oh, um, Auntie, um, she, she graciously um, has said that we can go first. Aloha. Um, my name is Shirley Kagawa. I'm a second generation here in Kyoka. We went through our first 90 year lease already. We're on our second. But um, what I wanted to say is for a woman's perspective. I'm not a hunter, so I don't get any benefits from the deal of our stake up there. As a business side, you know what I looked at this and they were presenting? And the part where it says rent, and it says to be negotiated for fair market value. Well, I was wondering, what are we collecting? Um, I think our nice deal now person said 8,000. But if you heard right, he said it's fees. It's not rent. Yeah. So we're actually not getting anything. They are not paying rent. No. Parker Ranch was there for 100 years. What did we collect from them? Andrew, do we collect any money from them? Maybe a dollar a year? Maybe a hundred dollars we got. Hey, did that make money for us? In the business side, you look, we're the ones who are supposed to benefit from this. We're not benefiting any, anything. We're not getting income. We're not getting land. Nor do we get preference to go up there and hunt all we can so that everybody doesn't have to go through the licensing. So there's still special benefits that we receive from this. Now, I heard all of the monopoly shared by all the guys out here, and then that really, I think, opened my eyes to a lot of stuff that's going on. But to make it simple, this is my business. This is my money. I don't want it run like this. I want us to get something out of it. I want our people to be on lands. We got so many people waiting. You know, so many people are waiting. Reason why it's it's dwindling is because they've passed on. You know? I'm 60, I'm 66 years old already. You know? Many more years than 
Wiley's will be up. But the idea is, Kihei was nice, he said, table is. No table, take it out. Sorry, the other not. We don't want to give this out to anybody. But what I want to know is what we can do as beneficiaries. I know Andrew, you're only asking for Monaco. A lot of times, Monaco goes back, but these things slip back in again. I want to know it's like something concrete, like beneficiaries. I'm willing to put my name on a document that said no to this, no lease lands. And maybe that's what we have to do. He got something back there. Is that what it is? Is that something we can sign as a beneficiary? To say no. No is no. So as a wahine, um, she doesn't hunt, so she doesn't really benefit from the hunting program. Um, and as far as our rent collected from the from the LNR, she doesn't see how that benefits the beneficiaries. And um, lastly, normal to this proposal. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you for waiting. Uh, I never know where to start in meetings like this. There are. A lot of emotions. I don't know who's left. Are you Dilanara people? Two of you? I thought there were like four or five. They got tired. You guys got tired. Oh, three. Um, uh, I was just at a Dilanara meeting on the 15th. Uh, you were talking about what to do with banyans. Okay. Um, you put us through these motions. You have meetings. And you want to know what we have to say. Then we find out the decisions were already made. We watch the news, and they're acting like, what is DLNR gonna do? When the Savio company already spoke with Uncle Billy's workers and said, this is the plan. A week after you said, please give us some feedback. Now we watch the news and you guys are acting like, what are we gonna do when you've already decided back in January what you were gonna do with those lands? with that property. We wanted the small business owners to get investors to help them build their hotels the way they wanted to. Not bring in corporations. Not bring in corporations to take over and pretty soon there are no more Hawaiian or local business owners. It's just corporations running the islands. Okay? First thing I need to say though, or second thing, is this is Hawaii, not America. This is not America. All this doesn't exist. We exist. We are Hawaii. This is Hawaii. We are sovereign. We are not asking for permission, and you don't even care what we have to say. We're telling you like Lakea told you, like Lakea said in front of everybody, we are taking our mountain back. We are gonna decide what we are gonna do with our land. You wanna make hunting rules? Make it in lands that's not Hawaiian homelands. Why are you even on the Hawaiian homelands when there's a whole mountain? Okay? And Mauna Loa, the airport? The airport's Hawaiian homelands, right? The judge gave us 600 million back in 1978. And then the Forgiveness Act said, we forgive them. They don't have to give you revenue, Hawaiians. They don't have to give it. OHA went to court 2001, 2006 to get revenue. And the court said, we don't have to. Because our boss, the federal government of this corporation, said, we don't have to. You take everything. You took all 133 islands and you gave us little scrap lands. You gave us little itsy bitsy lands as if you own it. And then whatever little scrap lands you call Hawaiian homelands, you go and take that from us too. You take from us and take from us. And you know why we sit on the waiting list till we all die? Because you want us to die. It's called genocide. It's called let them die. This is not, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna be nice. 
I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna be honest. We don't care what your courts have to say anymore. We have our own courts. We have Hawaiian Kingdom Supreme Courts on Maui, and we have Hawaiian Kingdom Supreme Courts on the Big Island, and we're getting another tribunal because we are gonna decide and make rulings on our land on what is right and fair and good. Because so far, all you guys done is act like criminals. You took it from us using fraud, theft, and treason in 1893. And since then, all you've done is perpetuate the fraud, theft, and treason. Criminals are supposed to go to court and answer to their crimes. They're supposed to be held accountable for their crimes and they're supposed to stop injuring the people, harming the people, and taking from the people. We are establishing our own courts. And I know your courts say, disregard. That is what you've done Hawaiians ever since Captain Cook showed up.